Hello YouTube and Patreon. I'm gonna make a video about jungle efficiency because there's a lot of people that have a floor like a flawed idea of how jungle works and a flawed idea about just drafting with champions in general and what champions are actually capable of doing. And to make it easier for people, they're put in categories and it will become easier for you to understand after watching the video. It's not gonna be too long, but it's gonna be enough for you to get a better idea both in competitive and also in solo queue so jungle efficiency is something that can be a little bit hard to talk about uh, without being misunderstood and what i mean by that is if you say something that is too specific people are gonna start saying things that doesn't make sense so this is going to be the agenda for what i will be talking about so the first thing is ganking junglers slash dog junglers farming junglers slash scale junglers what does it mean how are they efficient blah blah blah, blah. filler picks bridge junglers playing around waves lanes and how to and jungle efficiency as a whole trying to sum it up to you in the end so <laughs> ganking junglers um it's easy for you to put things in categories and then for you to understand and play a specific way or tunnel vision on how to play which you shouldn't do in the first place but there are certain champions that obviously gank better than other junglers and what i mean by that is a nunu and a rexai probably the two definitely up there for like the best ganking junglers the best junglers at ganking right and then there's a like champions like Kathus and Udyr and Fiddle that don't gank as well, but they can gank if the opportunity is there. Every single jungler in the game can gank, but there are champions that do it better than other champions. So, the first one here is ganking junglers slash dog junglers, but there are way more like there are way more champions in this category. You can easily put Trundle there. You can situationally also put Viego, J4, Puppy since how you can put all of them there but to make it easier for you i will try to explain it in a different way so these champions obviously gank way better than other champions in the game and their efficiency comes from being creative in their ganks and being creative around enemy vision and around lane states because a good lane state for them is a lane state that they can obviously punish and what i mean by that is if enemy bot lane is pushed up for example just a little bit like here that is enough for nunu to get the gank opportunity um, and they have to work their way around vision differently than a kathos and udyr and a fiddle has to they have to be extremely creative in how they want to gank to be successful they have to put their laners ahead. They have to either put, I mean, or themselves ahead enough to be a carry. But their efficiency doesn't come from having pixel perfect clear or having, you know, a full clear, like a full clearing. It comes from setting up their ganks with their laners, uh, with their laners wave states and understanding wave states. So every single jungler has to understand wave states but every single category here i mean not every single one but the three and the four one two they have to understand wave states but they have to use them differently is what i'm trying to say and then you have champions that scale obviously and you can categor categorize them as farming junglers but it doesn't mean that all they do is farm Right? A lot of people have common misconception about it and what it actually means. So I'll try to clear it up for you a little bit. These champions are by far, landslides, by far better than all of these champions that you see here individually, isolated. They are all way, way better uh, than all the other categories. But for you to make these champions work, specifically not Udyr, but um, for example, like Katus, Fiddle and Evelyn, for example, for them to work, the team has to play differently around you. 
Um, they still, I mean, no matter what jungler you're playing, you obviously want your jungler, like laners to play perfectly, but you can't get that. So they have to play differently around you because you are like the main character. If you get the resources, you should be able to carry. Um, a player that is like coming to mind when it comes to this is obviously Malice. He plays Udyr, Kathis, Hagrim, full clearing junglers, farming junglers, whatever. And these champions, um, if he gets the resources, he will also carry. He will do his job. Um, for you to be efficient on these junglers, you don't have to be a dog. And what I mean by that is you don't have to gank every single opportunity you get because your efficiency comes from being extremely efficient in your clear and lapping the enemy jungler. And what I mean by lapping is, of course, if you play Kathis into Sin Sao, if both full clear, Kathis is going to be like um, done way before you and he will eventually just lap you and obviously get higher level than the Sin Sao and then he will just destroy the game. So his efficiency comes from clearing really, really fast and clearing the junglers on rotation. Whereas Sin Sao is a champion that benefits from killing the enemy laners and by punishing enemies' mistakes in lane or even your own pro like proactivity. For example, if you have Kalista and Noth, we can potentially set up like a level 3 dive or a bounce back into a gank. So every single jungler is obviously situationally good. But to categorize it, I put them into like these four categories. So <laughs> there are filler picks as well and bridge junglers. And what is meant by that is when you draft, the reason why you never really see Kathis and um, Fiddle and Evelyn and champs that are strong isolated is because if you do that, you have to draft differently. You have to have AD mid laner preferably. And you have to, or you want to be isolated uh, AP. Udyr is different. Udyr can fit in every single category, really, except this one. Um, but he can fit in every single category. He is like a jack of all trades. He can gank well, he uh, scales well, he farms extremely fast. Um, so he's like a jack of all trades. But <laughs> to make it easier for you to understand drafting in general, the reason why you often see champions like Trundle, Sin Sao, J4, Puppy, Viego is because if you draft them, you don't really show anything, regardless of it being right or wrong. If you first pick Puppy, you're trolling, because enemy can easily draft around it, but people are still doing it. Teams are still doing it. If you first pick Trundle, you have like a flex pick. It can basically be flexed in all lanes, I would say. Of course, depending on matchup in mid lane and top lane. But you don't show anything in draft. Um, that's why it is so highly prioritized. And it requires... Like, he can do whatever he needs to do. He can bridge. He can be a filler pick. And filler pick meaning that he can do whatever he needs to do. In terms of if you need to help the laner, he can always do that. If you want to play around certain... Uh, X-Factors or certain things within the game, he can do that. If you want to be farming more, he can also do that and scale well. He just doesn't scale well into every single champion or every single draft, but he scales well and he will always have value because of his E and his R and his early game is really, really strong. And if you draft a Trundle, for example, you you cannot... You, you will have to draft a specific way for to make sure that Trundle isn't useful. Um, for example, you have to do a poke comp that he cannot touch, and if he wants to touch them, he will get one shot before he even gets in range. Um, and if you draft a Trundle early on, and enemy shows, so let's say they show, I don't know, like Zoe, Estrel, you can also go something like Callista North or Callista or even Draven or whatever and play really proactively around it. So the game isn't lost if you first pick a Trundle. And a Viego as well. Of course, there are games that these champions can't play, but they are very they are very limited. What I mean by that is for them to not be able to play, certain champions you have to pick on the enemy side. Uh, to make sure that they just simply can't play. Um, Sin Sao as well is one of these champions that he can farm and he can be 
proactive, not proactive, but efficient uh, by farming. And if he has like an enchanter support or enchanter mid lane, he can also be like a carry. He can also scale well. Um, whereas if you have a champion like Lee Sin, for example, it's just like a budget Sin Sao. He clears slower. He doesn't really offer anything but a kick. He doesn't scale well. He needs to be ahead by killing the enemy. Uh, he is very like forgiving in terms of you can fuck up a lot and still not get fucked over because of your W and because of your um, R and I mean you're just very mobile, right? Um, and filler picks, generally speaking, are what you see in competitive play because of this, um, yeah. And some examples here. Don't think of the comps as like they are playing together or playing against each other. Just think of it like you cannot pick five champions that want resources or you cannot pick four champions that want resources someone has to give if it's top lane or jungle someone has to give and if you pick a champion like Kathos for example this champion wants gold he wants to be the main character within the game um, but a champion like Olaf he can be efficient by clearing his camps he is very strong early so he can bridge our team in this situation he can bridge our team into the late game because we have basically four really insane strong uh, like insanely strong um, like scalers so regardless of like all of being weaker in the early game his job is to get us through the early game and then he can essentially just afk because we don't need him anymore um, but his job is to bridge his job is to make sure that we get to a point where he doesn't need to play the game because he has gotten the rest of the members to a state where they can carry him through. You can also pick Olaf as a carry, meaning that you have like Kama mid lane, for example, or Soraka mid lane, or Ivan mid lane, whatever, and this champion scales more, like he scales into like later stages because he has champions that keep him in the game. Um, same way on the other side here, insanely good scalers on all lanes. And Trundle doesn't need to carry, he just needs to disengage and he needs to get us through the early game. He needs to play defensively for us, meaning he needs to cover, for example, bad waves or dives, whatever. He has to cover so that we can get to a state where we can just, you know, we can just AFK and then they will carry for us. And he can just be a, like a peel butt. Um, and it's just important that you understand that you have to draft a specific way or you have to think of your champion in a specific way within the game to get the most value um, and then obviously in the third one here that's the farming junglers that are the main character and they are for sure way stronger than all the other champions with it like on the screen but for you for them to work you have to draft uh, differently you have to have different draft patterns you have to understand that these shamans are the character they are the main character and we play around them we play around the junglers we play around the jungle to get them to a state where they can just destroy um, and can be played around differently than for example nunu or rexai has to be played around and then we have like the more situational junglers um, every champion of course is situationally strong as I said but a J4 and a puppy requires certain things to be right for them if you first pick the champion or the champions they have to be extremely strong within the patch for it to be ever worth it um, but if you pick a J4 right there has to be a reason for it if you pick a puppy there has to be a reason for it so you can't just be picking them on on one for example or on one two because the enemy team can easily pick a like pick against it or pick around it because if you pick a puppy or a j4 if you pick a j4 on one for example let's just go with this guy the enemy can easily pick dashes and they can easily pick situations that make it really hard for him to play if you have to play against or if you pick the j4 you would like to know what you're playing against if you're playing against like a Lulu, for example, when there was like Lulu Jinx uh, meta or like Jinx uh, Aphelios meta, I think it was, these champions are very immobile. They need champions to make up for that. They need champions to 
to kite for them. They need champions to peel for them. If you have to play against this, for example, J4 is good because you have three champions that if they don't have flesh, they are dead. As l uh, like, of course, assuming we have champions that can actually follow up on the J4. Um, it could be like a six, for example. We, we go six. If we have like a six, J4, and we play against uh, Jinx Lulu, if we lock them up in the ult, they die. Right, but if you play into if you pick J4 on one, for example, and you have to play into Jinx Tom Kench or Jinx Thresh, maybe even, but Tom Kench is a little bit better in my opinion. He has peel, you can't really do anything against the champion. It could also be, let's say, we have LeBlanc on, on mid lane or a champion that is very hard for us to pin down and it requires or it, it requires like a really like a really sick flank or something um like a really clean setup um for him to add more value in the fight because you don't really pick j4 for like this strong early game you pick him for the ult and the uh, eq in and out right and for example if you have to play into something like this, it can become really impossible for you to play the game. Of course, if you pick him early, we can also counter pick the jungle and we just build a comp around the J4, knowing that he will do that. Um, or knowing that we can easily play around it. And the same goes for Puppy. If we go Puppy, we can also easily pick champions around it um, to make it hard for him to play the game. And with Puppy specifically, her value doesn't come only from the W. You know, her ult is really, really strong. And her EQ, really strong early. Her EQ is always like CC. Um, but her ult specifically is extremely strong. If you ult in a fight, you can create a 4v5 situation or even a 3v5 situ situation because you, you obviously knock someone out of the fight. And it's basically a one fight. So the champion is really strong, but it is not first pickable because you can easily pick into it and make it hard for the enemy to, to play around you. Okay. Um, and this is just very, very important for you to understand that these champions, they shouldn't be first pickable. Of course, you can still make it work, but that doesn't mean it's good. They are a little bit more situational. And if you see maybe two picks that are really good for Puppy, let's say the enemy is griefing and they pick maybe a Kali first, and then they pick, I don't know, um, maybe listen. Of course, Puppy has value, and then if we pick it on two, it makes sense. But if you pick it on one, it's very easy for people to pick into it. Yes, she's flex pick; she can be flexed in all, like in in three lanes, right? But that doesn't mean that we can just first pick the champion. Because it's super easy to pick into without showing anything. You know, if you show a Lilia, for example, you're not really showing anything that makes the game unplayable. Uh, if you go Lilia and then enemy can't just hard counter it. Um, yeah, so it's just very important for you to understand what it actually means. So, playing around ways and lanes and how to. It's of course, I would say it's the most important thing. For a jungler to understand how to play around lanes, regardless of what you are playing. These champions have to play around lanes differently than these champions have to. Um, but that doesn't mean they don't know or they shouldn't know how lanes work, right? It is, in my opinion, the most important thing for a jungler to understand how lanes work and how waves work. And what I mean by that is, if we have a trundle, right? His way of being efficient comes from understanding of waves and understanding of matchups and understanding of what you are capable of doing for the for the team as well as yourself. But if we have a Draven and we have maybe a Thresh or a Blitzcrank or a Janna or whatever, really, really strong lane that gets Pryo and can kill and we play into Callista maybe, like the two strongest ADCs at the moment. Or at least up there. And then, I don't know, set maybe. Obviously, this is a really explosive lane. 
that means we can't like we can't force them to leash because they need to get prior or they need to make sure that they can get to first so that they control the matchup potentially they fight right potentially the fight and now they are 50 50 percent hp and what you can use this for is if you know that the enemy jungler is playing like a like a eve for example or Kathus, let's just go with with eve he starts top sites oh he starts top sites <coughs> now we have prior in the matchup we know that we have prior in the matchup we should have prior in the matchup level one if you are playing tunnel into eve and you just full clear we both full clear then eve is winning because she never has to make a decision she's never under pressure but if you force an invade for example you do this one two three invades knowing that we have prior and knowing that we want to play around it then eve can't get this cordon of the jungle and if she wants to then do one two three four it's still fucked because she's going to be on the wrong side of the, the lane or not the lane but the map because now set and Kalista can't play and if they fall behind it's if these champions suck if they are not ahead um so you have to make an idea behind how you want to play and this is one way that you can play around lanes let's say our bot lane kills maybe they kill Kalista. Kalista's in base because she's dead and set didn't die doesn't matter now they shove in a wave they shove in two waves they shove in wave two and wave three because they killed Kalista early on. What happens naturally is that regardless of uh, no laners, no champions in the game, the lane is going to bounce. And what bouncing means is that naturally the, the enemy minions is going to it's gonna naturally push back towards uh, our tower. You as a jungler, you have to understand when my situation now comes. When should I be bot lane? I have roughly... 50 seconds. Kalista died. She wants to slow push because if she hard shots, then they're just going to freeze on her. She wants to slow push. When do I need to be bottling? I need to be bottling in 50 seconds because she's slow pushing the first wave and then second wave is going to be in a situation where I can easily gank. And we have item advantage and Kalista died. And if you don't understand this, you're giving him a free pass. You're giving him a free pass. They they push in the wave and now they can potentially move on the map. And they have the option to impact the map or either reset and then bounce back on, on your teammates. And then they might be in, in, in a bad situation. So this is like one way that you can be efficient as a, like the trundle here. And obviously this can be in top as well as like pushing down bot lane into impacting mid or pushing down bot lane into resetting into opening up through mid and taking control over mid and then into bot whatever it can be used in many many ways but this is just one example um if you are a farming jungler let's say again we are playing Kathus this time around we are playing udir maybe whatever Let's just go with Udyr. You're the Udyr. Um, and we play into Lee Sin. Let's go with Lee Sin. Because this champ is dog shit. So let's go with Lee Sin. Lee Sin's job is to impact the map. Lee Sin's job is to make sure that we, we have to leave the jungle ourselves. If we leave the jungle, Lee Sin wins. What I mean by that is if we do three camps and then descend maybe gang spot lane and now you have to salvage bot lane or whatever, descend wins. But if Lysin full clears and you full clear, you win. If Lysin does three camps, does a failed attempt at gank in mid, you win because now you already start lapping him. He does uh, one, two, three, or one, two, three, gank spot lane fails to gank. He fails to gank and when he fails to gank, the game is basically over. Because now you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, double scuttle, reset, do, or even take its uh, raptors, right? Reset, do one, two, uh, three, four, and then potentially impact the map or go invade or take his raptors the second time around as well. So you start labbing him and you start factoring in his camps to like into your own clear. And then eventually you're gonna be levels up. You're gonna be XP ahead. You're gonna be you're gonna be gold ahead. And 
if he doesn't, if he fails to impact the map, the game is just over for him. And then he has to rely on his team to carry. And it's also like it's also super important for laners to understand what it means because if laners don't understand and you die to these random shit ganks that shouldn't work if we just activate one brain cell then he is out of the game and your udir will just take over right obviously depending on comp if he's if he has to play against the vein lulu for example udir, udir will not be too happy um but yeah understanding jungle efficiency is so fucking important and jungle efficiency isn't it's also about like the pathing right in terms of uh being as efficient as you can in your like in your clear but it's more about understanding the entirety of what your champion wants to do and what your champion is capable of doing um so just to sum up quickly jungle efficiency is about what your champion like your champion is able to do and what your champion will champion is capable of doing and udir is not capable of free camp uh, jungle like a uh, free free camp into gank i mean he's capable of doing and it's doing it and if the situation is there he's still able to gank but he doesn't want to because his efficiency comes from clearing way faster than a Lysen, for example and you have to understand that your champion identity doesn't mean that you can't do anything else you know if udyr has the perfect situation for a gank because enemy is making a mistake of overextending for example or his like his laners have to overextend themselves because of a wave then you still have to go potentially clear the wave you need to understand that because you are farming jungler it doesn't mean that you can't gank if the situation is perfect and the enemies are making numerous mistakes you can still gank you can still be proactive in that way same way that as like a sensao doesn't have to three camp or two camp or one camp into gank you need to focus on learning the game you need to focus on learning what jungle efficiency actually means and this is just an opener this is not the end all be all of the conversation it's an opener to get you to think it's an opener to get you to understand more about the jungle and more about the picks and more about drafting itself all right uh thank you for watching obviously hit the like button subscribe bell all that shit and check out the patreon where there is a shit ton of other videos that you can use for improvement um as well as just think right guys be logical thanks for watching